Smack dab in the middle of meatloaf week. Yes, we are. Where's that shot? Take that shot. There it is, sitting there majestically waiting for me to use it. It's beautiful. It is. So we made a meatloaf the other day, uh, Monday, mm -hmm. and uh, I knew there wasn't going to be any left, and Max took a bunch of it away with him, so I had, to make an, I had to make another meatloaf. I made a meatloaf last night, and there it is. Why are those sticks, go back, why are those sticks in there? I know. Max? Um, to keep the form, to keep the shape. No, but I had foil over it. Yeah, there and because go. the top has got, uh, I mean, it's ketchup, chipotle, and the apricot jam. It's really sticky, and I knew if I put foil over it, when I lifted up the foil, it would pull all the glaze on top off, and I didn't want that. That's intelligent Interesting. cooking. Okay. Right Thank you very much. I'm thinking ahead. Jeez. Uh, and we're gonna use that today, making a meatloaf sandwich. A grilled meatloaf sandwich is gonna be effing amazing. Can't and by the way, I won't be able to have a bite of it because I'm still on my no carb, no sugar plan. That's okay. It's it been uh, Let's get an update. just over a week. I'm at seven pounds. Nice. That over I lost. Or under? I didn't add oh, okay. that. Okay. <laughs> wow. Yes, under. Thank you. Thank seven you. in a week. I feel, I feel better about myself. But didn't we not? I think we talked about this last week. It's not very healthy to lose that much weight that fast. Well, but I right? believe that because this thing was figured out by a doctor, mm -hmm. he knows what he's doing. And I did this once before, and I didn't <laughs> suffer any ill effects. Didn't the Atkins guy have some medical training? <laughs> yeah, he eventually died, too. <laughs> oh. But not because of his diet. Uh, and if I uh, take my shirt off and I stand a certain way and suck in my stomach just the right amount, I actually look really good. I won't be doing that for you. I'm just saying. In the mirror, I can make myself look really good. Maybe one day we can get you to roll your stomach on camera. No, I won't be doing that <laughs> anytime soon. Uh, we would be remiss if uh, we didn't start today's show by mentioning what happened in Boston on Monday. Yep. Mm -hmm. I don't want to dwell on it. Uh, I think we've all um, got it in our minds. Uh, I had a conversation with a neighbor about it uh, shortly after it happened, and I said, you know, my, my brother... Uh, I'm the youngest of four. The, this one, the next oldest, took his own life three years ago. And I did not understand, as I still don't understand, why somebody would take their own life. But when it comes to taking lives of others in this sort of ridiculous way, I really can't understand it. No, mm -hmm. not at all. And, the, and the, the first child, uh, the first person you heard about was an eight-year-old boy doing nothing but waiting to uh, greet his father when he finished the race? It's, it's terrible. absolutely senseless. And I know that word is used a lot, but I don't get it. How can, uh, how can people hate us so badly? And they haven't figured out yet who's done this. Don't they normally get a little bit more information quicker? I feel like we I, it, normally know, know almost immediately. They, they may have it. They may have it, and, and they're not sharing it yet for a variety of reasons. Yeah, I, mean, I would they, think mm. that even if they did know, yeah, for security reasons or things like that. I mean, that. it's just... it's just. But it's, it's, not like, it's not like on 9-11 they weren't telling us that it was Al-Qaeda. Well, what, I what's think... What's the difference I, here? No, I think Al-Qaeda took responsibility for it right they away. Oh, yeah. so that's, that's nobody's the difference. taking responsibility no, nobody's for come it? Out yet. Nobody's okay. Come out yet. I don't mm. think we're going to play it here, but if you see the video, Ugh. it's... It's it's like a movie scene. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. It's bad, and you you realize how many people were in the actual scene of the explosion. And then you realize, wow, like you can't imagine just being there alive. And you know, like Boston marathon's so big now, right? Mm. Um, my fiance had a friend that finished the marathon 30 minutes before it happened. Jeez. So like two degrees of separation right exactly there. Exactly right. I mean, wow. Max, you remember, uh, Chris Smith? Yeah. Zach's friend. Uh huh. His parents live in Boston. Yeah. Uh, his Chris's sister, Katie, lives here, mm -hmm. works for KUSI. She was there visiting. Five minutes before the bomb went off, yeah. the first one, they were right there. They have a picture of the stands, people in the stands behind. Wow. Five minutes before they took this picture. And there's stories like this all over the place. It's just... That's insane. And it's they, devastating. They it's heartbreaking. Oh, yeah, they left. They took their picture. They'd they been left. there a few hours. Then they took their picture, and they went back to uh, their apartment. So the, the and then, boom. The Family Guy creator, Seth Myers. No. McFarlane. Seth McFarlane, sorry. Seth McFarlane was booked on one of uh, the 9-11 flights. Oh. And, he, and he woke up late and got there late because his driver didn't get him there in time. So. And missed his flight. Missed his flight and then ended up on a different one. It's just crazy. I suppose if it's not your time, it's not your time. No. Mm -hmm. Not that, not that 
you look at this and the people that have died mm -hmm. and been injured and think, well, I guess it must have been their time. There's just there's no thinking through any of this stuff. No, and I don't I don't want to talk about it anymore because yeah. it's just so it's terrible. Our hearts go out to Boston and New England and everybody, everybody. out there, everybody yeah. affected. Everybody. So let's talk about some food. Let's talk about this. Somebody, Lynn. Yeah. Uh, you're Asian. You understand <laughs> the internet maybe better than me and Max. How is it possible that they're saying now that half of Justin Bieber's Twitter followers were fake, non-existent? I know. Did how. you hear this story? I no. know. I can tell you exactly how, how, how. Because oh, well, I don't know why Justin Bieber specifically might yeah. have all these fake followers, but I know that there are companies out there that create and develop fake profiles that can give you more likes. So you can buy Twitter followers, you can buy Instagram followers. And I'm only thinking about this because just before uh, we went, we started today, uh -huh. Lynn said, hey, you know, you're almost at 28,000 likes on your Facebook. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm wondering why that doesn't go up faster. I feel like I've been in the 27,000 for a long time <laughs> now. Mm -hmm. And I guess, I, guess uh, I need new people coming in hitting like, is that right? Yes, of course, yeah. You can't, Once you like, you can't like again. No, no, no. So I guess maybe the same people are coming back, but now I need to... And I never asked that. And I know I see all these... I ever like us on Facebook. is just so they can get those numbers up and they can say we've got, like Justin Bieber, 30 million. Even if you take half of his, his Twitter followers away, he still has 15 million legitimate followers, which is crazy. Yeah. Yeah, so they make... These companies make ghost accounts that follow people but they don't tweet and the reason that they can't single out these accounts for deletion deletion is that a word yeah yeah for yeah, deletion yeah. the reason they can't single them out is because there's millions of people out there that don't tweet they just follow people they just yeah. sign up and they follow a couple different people this is what this so, article says right here yeah like 31 percent were fake yeah or empty <clears throat> empty that's exactly. right empty. and then 17 were inactive but yeah you know when i had twitter when i first started i didn't tweet for a long mm -hmm. time i just used it to follow people exactly like what do i have to tweet about oh like today i i blew my nose no you know, they say that great. yeah <laughs> like, they say that why? Yeah. that facebook is for your, for people you went to high school with and twitter is for people you wish you went to high school with oh that's funny yeah <laughs> in my space you're a complete loser if you have my space still right oh no i wouldn't say that uh, uh, do people saw do you have my space you know the only reason i say that, i'm biased i have a friend who works on my space mm. like the actual look of it and i think it looks brilliant right now it just doesn't really have a meaning it's more for music right now oh i see yeah a lot of bands put their stuff up there I they know do that. oh because you can play from there or something i think it has right? a good music interface yeah. my space okay. is actually now targeted I feel, now i feel bad for that just that. No, somebody's gonna write in and say it's not fair of you to no, but you're right. MySpace completely got pushed out by all the other stuff. And didn't media. I hear, wasn't there a rumor once that the MySpace creator was offered some large number of millions of dollars for MySpace and he held off? Really? He was holding out for more money, yeah. Didn't Justin Bieber buy MySpace? Or not Justin Bieber, Justin Timberlake. Buy MySpace? Buy MySpace. Oh, I, don't I don't know. I think he's one of the co-owners of it now. You're confused because you remember him from the Facebook movie. Yeah, you're right. It does look good. Yeah, so no. that's this is this is my friend Annie's work. She she does this. It's, it looks nice. really good. But um, but look at there's obviously for there's obviously a strong focus on on music because look at so. the cover. Yeah, she's one of the the lead designers for the MySpace interface. Cool. She does really good work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want her job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I I think you you might be right in the sense that it might ultimately go away because they know. can't compete with five with a billion Facebook users come approaching. I mean, think about how many options mm -hmm. you have listening to music now. Yeah. And, Spotify. you know, just to kind of bring it back, think about how many options you have watching, like, food shows nowadays, too. Mm -hmm. oh, don't get me started. I'm going to talk about food shows in a minute. Okay. Mm -hmm. Take this picture, though. So, after we shot the meatloaf the other day, here's a picture of Lynn taking a picture of <laughs> what the, the meatloaf, right? Mm -hmm. That the, the pan in the foreground is the pan that the meatloaf came off of. What's significant about this picture is the stuff that's on the pan the drippings, the drippings, stuff like here, little tiny bits of, uh, little tiny pieces of meatloaf that are left, and right here, and right here, like the burned edges part. Didn't you have a name for it? I called it fond. Yes. F-O-N-D, which mm -hmm. normally is the stuff that's at the bottom of, uh, uh, if you grilled some, um, seared some, some uh, uh, short ribs or some chicken breasts in a pan, you were making like a stew, and then you take them out to add the vegetables, the little bits that are left at the bottom are called the fond, or as Marie, or as, uh, um, uh, what's her name? Martha Stewart would say, mm -hmm. fond. The fond. fond. 
It's the good bits. It's the good bits. Uh, what's significant about that, go back to that picture, is that while Max, while Lynn was getting that picture and Max was doing his thing, I took a little piece mm. of, uh, of uh, baguette and uh, crisped, it, crisped it up a bit and put some of that stuff on there. How good was that? It was awesome. So, yeah. but it's like good. the guilty pleasure type of food. You, you can't eat like six of those. You can't eat. You just can't do it. Yeah. yeah. By the way, yep. I didn't eat one of those. <laughs> good for you. You'd have and, a then the more and then the and then and then Saturday, <laughs> look, I made two more meatloaves. Jeez. Uh, was it Saturday? Saturday made two more meatloaves, took them down to specialty produce, and made made like twenty meatloaf sandwiches. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm gonna do today. Perfect. For the people down there. They must have loved it. Jordan that. was there. They loved it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Stupid. I wish I could eat this food. I can't. All right. Do I don't watch a lot of food uh, cooking on TV. Mm -hmm. Most of it pisses me off. I don't know why. I just I get irked by it. There's a couple things I'm okay to watch. We talked about this. I like watching Chopped. I think Chopped's a legitimate show. Chopped is great. And I kind of used to like um, uh, Iron Chef. Until? I hadn't uh, watched it for a while. Until it went too mainstream for him. No, it's not that it's too mainstream. Mm -hmm. You did like it before it was mainstream. Mm. Like the Asian Iron yeah. Chef? Oh, yeah. I like the, re the legitimate, the real Iron Chef, yes. the Asian one, right? The Japanese one. Oh, you're talking about the non... I'm now talking about okay. the American Food Network version. So I'm flipping channels and it's on the other day. And look, we all know, it's, it's no secret that the Iron Chef's know the uh ingredient the secret ingredient in advance i think it's a secret to some people i think some people no. don't know that stuff. and and here's here okay so i heard this about the japanese show and i believe the the american version is the same thing the chefs may not know which ingredient they're gonna get mm -hmm. but they know it's going to be a choice of three so when they pull off the cover and there's octopus there They've known it could have been octopus. They've planned for octopus. And I think the way you know that is the second that they say go, all the chefs on either team scatter and they start doing something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With no conversation whatsoever. Right? Yeah. I mean, so I, how is that possible? Until I'm watching the other day and now they've started this thing. Oh, yeah. I know what you're talking that about. They say go. I guess they get the ingredient, and now each side has like a little 13-second huddle. Mm -hmm. But it's the most ridiculous thing ever <laughs> with the Iron Chef going, well, I'm thinking about a granita. And the guy goes, oh, okay, and he wanders off. There's no more conversation than that. I think we need a, a compote. Fine, and the guy wanders off. It's bullshit. And I feel like they're even faking that conversation to make it so they throw in an extra... Well, we should make um, hmm. a sauce with this. Oh, okay, fine. Uh, you know, there's nothing. I, I, I hate that. I almost guarantee you this, okay? The one hour that they have to cook yes. isn't one hour. Isn't? It's more. I, I can guarantee oh. it's more. They stretch it? You have to because you talk about production and things like that. Like, even if yeah. it's live, like, they have to take into account, like, times where they interview the chefs or times when they have to redo a shot. Or something like that. Or what if they what if they switch to a new spot like in the kitchen and the lighting mm. is horrible and you can't see anything? Well, I don't, well, I don't know. Like, I'm going to guess they have everything pre-lit. But what I'm thinking is okay. this: if they have 60 minutes to cook, it might it might be like 70. I'm I'm going to just do a wild guess. Yeah. There. And then I also think that you're right; those conversations are definitely definitely staged. I think they know what they're going to get. Of course, they have to. But we've talked about this. That show that that uh, Jamie, uh, not Jamie Oliver, it's, uh, Curtis Stone show, Take Home Chef. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm where he happens to find a hot chick in the supermarket shopping yes, to make her yes. husband or boyfriend dinner. Fake, fake, fake. This? Completely set up. It's not a surprise. When he goes, eh, eh, just don't worry about the cameras. I just follow people around the supermarkets. Mm -hmm. See this? if I can buy the groceries and take them home and make something for them. <laughs> bullshit. It's bullshit. It's indicative of a larger trend in our television today where people think that they're watching reality TV like all the Bravo shows, when in fact nearly everything is staged or pre-planned or scripted. That show that I like to watch, House Hunters. Yes. Till I found out, I was happy with it, till I found out that parts of it are staged. Mm -hmm. Girl here in San Diego that knows Michelle that used to produce Sam the Cooking Guy. Really? Got a, got a phone call from a realtor friend, said, we're doing a thing, we need your apartment to make it look like it's something that people could buy. 
It wasn't even for sale. What? Completely fake. Oh, Kitchen I... Nightmares I was watching the other day, the uh -huh. Gordon Ramsay show. The show ends. Uh, there's like the sidewalk. You're seeing down the sidewalk of in front of the restaurant. Mm -hmm. Gordon Ramsay comes out and his show's over and he starts walking down the sidewalk and you think it's going to end. And then the owner happens to come out of the restaurant running after him. Gordon, Gordon, can't you stay for a while? It's really good. No, I can't stay. I can't stay. That's fucking bullshit. That's not really going to happen. <laughs> they know he's not going to stay. And this pissed me off. So uh, Kelly manages some hair salons. Two of the hotels that they're in are being scoped out by the Housewives of Miami producing team were this past weekend mm -hmm. looking for a location to shoot the finale. Somebody's getting married, apparently, and they're looking for a hotel to have this wedding in. Well, if it was real... Wouldn't the people involved who were getting married be the ones to decide this thing? Yes. No, they're not. Producers are out looking for the right location to, to have this wedding, whatever in. I can't <laughs> well, stand it. Look, I, it, fucking, it just pisses me off. I understand from both sides, though, because like, from a production standpoint, what if they pick the place that wasn't feasible to have cameras and mm -hmm. you know, permits to do this? So I understand that part. Oh, I don't buy any of it. Joan, I was flipping channels <laughs> the other day. Melissa and Joan. Melissa Rivers and Joan Rivers. She's sitting having a conversation with somebody. I want to go. She's so pissed off. Apparently, she hated uh, Johnny Carson. Didn't talk to Joan Rivers for 20 years or something. Yeah. They hated each other at the end. She, I want to go dance on his grave. Where's his grave? Well, <laughs> he's not been buried. I guess he was cremated or something, and he can't find it. But mm. they went to some park in his town where there's like a statue thing of him. She went there and had her moment with him. Come on. I don't, I don't buy any of this. They do this shit for the cameras because regular people's lives aren't going to be that interesting. So would you rather have boringer TV or would you rather have more stage productions that actually provide entertainment? Because look, I'm not saying you're the call only Call it something else. This. Don't call I, it reality rather, I think TV, I'd rather though. there be a clearer line. Yes, I you know? think that's what I it's would okay like It's okay if, if you want to see fiction, but you got to understand yeah. that it's not real. Some of the things in this production were forced by the producers. They <laughs> yeah, aren't really saw, what the the... The people wanted to do. This I saw thing. a friend of the show, Matt Gordon, on House Hunters, San Diego, or Los Angeles, uh, or not? No, House no, Hunters. it wasn't House Hunters. Um, what was it? Million Dollar Listing. Los million Angeles. Dollar Listing. Yeah. yeah, he was there in the kitchen. They walked in. I haven't actually seen it. I've only seen pictures. Oh, of he was he was catering uh, an, an open house at a, in Rancho. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Hey, we should uh, get jump in, in the, the kitchen, kitchen and cook. Yes. Right. Uh, I know. You let saw me it. just remind everybody. Uh, we all of dot com. Great friend of the show. You can uh, check out all their products by going to their website, weallof.com. Up in the top right-hand corner, you see Shop Now. Put my name, Sam, in there. You'll get 10% off anything you buy over the internet. Or a cooler move is go to their stores, do a little olive oil tasting, and you'll only be tasting certified extra virgin California olive oils. There can be no bad there. Nope. And if you don't know about olive oil, don't try and do it at like a regular cookware store that has two or three bottles out and mm -hmm. nobody there to help you. Mm -hmm. You want some explaining. You want somebody telling you, well, this is extra fruity. This is a little bitter. Here's what you do with this. Here's what you, how you cook with this. I can mix these two. Show you. I mean, it's amazing. You should really get yourself into a store. But if you can't and you know what you like, do it online. We all have .com. We love them. Oh, yeah. And coming up this summer is the Paso Robles. We are sorry. Paso Robles. Paso Robles. Olive Oil Festival in Northern California. We all live there. It's a really cool thing. Oh. I'll give you guys more information about that in the coming weeks. And huh. if you're in NorCal, it might be a fun thing to do. Hey, how far from San Francisco is Paso Robles? I think it's about an hour south. An hour south, got it. It's in wine country, so it's beautiful. So uh, I'll got keep it. you guys up to date on that. Cool. All right. I'm ready to cook. All right. Let's, let's do it. <laughs> This is the sanctuary at Fixtures Living in Costa Mesa, and it's their spa. And starting in April, they're having a steam event. Everything you want to know about steam for the spa. Shh. And yes, we all love Fixtures Living here. All right, um, I'm turning the griddle on for the bread. It's a meatloaf sandwich we're making. I could totally toast the bread there's something about grilled bread to me that just boosts the flavor way, way up. So let me take these guys out. Quickly explain the difference between grilled and toasted bread. 
Oh, toasted bread. In a toaster, mm -hmm. comes out, you butter it. Grilled bread, you're going to see. Butter it first, then put it on here. And maybe it's because the surface gets all perfectly crispy brown all the way. I don't know. There's something about grilled bread that kicks the pants off of toasted bread for me. I, I agree. agree. Good. I like to hear that. Okay, so... Um, we just start getting this pan hot. I'm going to do the bread on here. I have some butter. And here's the bread. I try and say this. Don't use the same bread all the time. I found this super seedy, really gorgeous bread. Look how, look how magnificent that is. Seedy bread is where it's at. Isn't it? Yeah. It's crazy. I love it. This is called, I haven't seen this before. This is called Dave's Killer Bread. It's from Minnesota or some, <laughs> some shit. That's cool. Dave's Killer Bread. I like Dave's it. Killer Bread. I don't know where it is. Uh, Milwaukee. All right. So, look how gorgeous this is. And though I can't eat it, I can still use great stuff. So, here. Just let me just butter here. Don't have to do both sides. But I definitely want the outside to have this really nice crispy texture and be buttered. So, those guys are there. They're going to start doing their thing. Heats up all the way. I'm heating this pan. Did you just put the pan to your face? Uh, I did. You know what that is? To check the heat, right? That's how I check the heat. It's not uh, really, so probably a little proviso would be in order. Don't try this at home. <laughs> no. But it's, a, it's just my way. I don't know. It's not necessarily a good way, but it's my way. Okay, so now meatloaf, we can cut a couple slices. You can just go right out of the middle here. One and two. It really just doesn't get much better than this with the meatloaf leftovers. Is that a meatloaf sandwich? No. I mean, yeah. And then uh, Friday, we're going to show you what to do with just some little random bits. Just a couple extra little pieces mm. what to make. So I'm just going to put a tiny little bit of oil in this pan so things don't stick too terribly. Let me get this hot. And the goal here is simple. Uh, I want to get this, get a little color on this. I have to warm it up, of course. But you'll see how great it gets after it, it goes into this thing. So let me take my slices here. Nice. My bread's doing its thing. Almost need uh, like three, three pieces of this in here, but I think we're going to be okay. That looks good. Beautiful. Now, you remember what we did. Want to back up for a sec, Maxie? Mm -hmm. You remember what we did. We made a little bit of the extra sauce, right? That I have. Shit. Somewhere in here. Can you remind me what was in the sauce again? Yeah, I got it. Hold on. In this sauce is um, is uh, ketchup, chipotle, and apricot jam. Oh yeah, that's right. So sweet, a little spicy, a little traditional with that ketchup in there. So that's doing its thing nicely. This bread is starting to get crispy. Beautiful color right there. I want to keep that going. I want to do this. In the sandwich, I want to add two things. I want to add a little cheese to it when I flip it. And some arugula. Are we all arugula fans? Yes. yes. Absolutely. Look at how beautiful that is, right? This baby arugula. So simple. It's so simple. Let me say, hey, uh, Mama's Day. Mama's Kitchen in San Diego is an organization that has uh, delivered meals to people with HIV, AIDS, and cancer for the last 21 or two years. Their big fundraiser every year is called Mama's Day. It's May 7th or 8th. What's the date this year? Uh, May 10th. May 10th. Sorry. Friday. Uh, Friday, May 10th. And uh, it's a huge food tasting. And it's going to be at the Hyatt Aventine here in San Diego in La Jolla. If you want to go, go online, mamaskitchen.org. You can buy tickets right there. I'm the culinary host. I don't know what that means. Oh, there's a VIP thing beforehand. I'll be making something. There'll be cocktails. 
but there's about 65 restaurants you walk around. It's one of the best food tastings in San Diego. If you're into it, you want to go to things like that, this is the one to go to. I'm not kidding. Okay, let's give these guys a little turn, Maxi, and they'll look like this. And that's, see this? Don't, don't look at that and think this is burnt. Look at that and think that's just amazing color in there. You have to get color on to flavor these things up. Uh, you know, when you cook a piece of chicken and you get those grill stripes on there, yeah. that's where the flavor lives. Okay, so here's what I want to do. Sorry, I gotta turn these guys around a little bit. Let me put some cheese on here now. Oh God, now I feel like I'm pr pressed for time. I thought I was doing fine. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Just do a couple of these guys quickly, quickly, quickly. And now watch, now I can turn this down. Oh. Put that lid on there. Let's see what's happening to my bread. I probably burnt the bread. <laughs> oh no. No. We're, We're okay. Good. There we go. Wow, this is gonna be really good. Crispy, crispy grilled bread. Doing fine on that side. Cheese right here, starting to melt a little bit. We're almost there. Oh, I know what I need. Uh, mayonnaise, and I use the QP, right? This Japanese mayonnaise that, that I swear by, that anybody that's ever had it swears by too. Let's go, sauce, this, come on. That's gonna be amazing. Okay, I'm gonna go. I can't, I can't wait any longer to make this. I really can't. Okay, first thing that goes down is some of the QP. And some of this, this extra oh, sauce. That's what I'm talking about. Here's the deal, ladies and gentlemen. The point of a, I think the point of a sandwich like this is to have it be super delicious and gooey too. No neat little dainty sandwiches for us. Nope. This is what we like. So throw in a whole bunch of arugula. It looks nice, flavor's delicious, it's kind of peppery. And then you take these guys right here Hold on, Max. There you go. This meatloaf right here. We'll put it on, oh my gosh. We put it on like this. There's more meatloaf than there's bread. This guy goes on top. You're not kidding. And I had a knife here, here's my knife. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Unbelievable. Piss me off. You know what sucks? I can't eat this. I can't even have a bite. <laughs> so here's what we're going to do. Max, you going to come have a bite of this? You want to switch places with me? Sure. Okay. <laughs> Hold on one sec. This will be ugly. Oh, my God. Lynn, go to one. Oh, okay. <laughs> God, he's there. Okay, go get over there. Oh, man. All right. And okay, our new so host. here we go. Ready? Mmm. You're not faking that, are you? Mmm. How good is that? Is it unbelievable? <laughs> Don't die on us. It is pepper. <laughs> unbelievable. This is the Sam Live cost. Are you ending <laughs> This is a meatball. <laughs> meatloaf sandwich. You can't even talk. <laughs> talk from behind the camera. Hey, dude. Uh, all right, mm. that's it. That's it for today. Friday, we're doing... Uh, a little pasta thing with some leftover meatloaf. It's a, it's a great way to do this. I don't know why you wouldn't want to do this. Uh, make the sandwich. There it is again, hold on. A little shaky there, sir. There it is. Mm. Look at that. Oh yeah. We'll see you on Friday. Thanks for hanging out with us. It's been fun. Make this, I'll be able to eat this in a couple of weeks. Mm. <laughs> see ya.